Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we're going to be starting a new week, and that week is Random Rumble! Where we randomly go through the spreadsheet, pick out random bands, random songs, and see what happens. Today, we're going to be checking out the Tony Danza Tap Dance Extravaganza, and the song is Yippie Kaye, Mother. So, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, yes, see, even if you look at the title, there's a uh, there's little like bleep symbols there. So this time, I'm pretty sure it's not YouTube trying to hit me up on my channel and keeping it clean. It's literally the name of the song. I made that sound with my voice. So let's get on this one. This is three minutes long, which is way on the shorter side for this channel. So I'm interested to see what's going on here. Um, I don't know, man. Tony Danza's not making me think of metal, but everything that gets requested on this channel is pretty much metal or metal adjacent. So I don't know. Let's go. Oh, God, I'm a 
The definition, the definition of music that I tend to refer to, uh, I learned back in World Musics 101, back in university, uh, because a lot of the concepts of music that we kind of understood to be normal uh, or universal were really only universal to traditional Western ideas in music, and they weren't exactly applicable to uh, some of the ancient musics that we can see across the world and other uh, you know, civilizations. Uh, so, this definition of music that I, I learned and kind of incorporated into my own understanding of music is an intentional combination of sounds and silence. I still kind of grapple with that a little bit because I think unintentionally you can create music, but I think music as an art form is an intentional idea. However, with that very vague definition of collections of sound and silence, this is music. <laughs> uh, it's something. It's, it's... <sighs> I'm really trying to process this. And the thing is, is that from what I kind of grasp is that this isn't super unusual this is kind of what heavier hardcore is uh it's just it's so unlike anything that i tend to gauge my music on strong harmony completely missing or i should say strong melody completely missing concepts of harmony gone um uh, beautiful harmony. Uh, is anything harmonious? Kind of, but also it's mostly all dissonant. Um, is there, is there a counterpoint? Not really. There's kind of not even a melodic, a lead melodic line. The vocalist, which would normally take this spot, kind of has one note and rhythmically well, the changes in the vocal line are all rhythmic for the most part. There's like two different vocal textures he uses, but it's basically choosing between two different notes more or less. And so there's not a lot going on there melodically. Um, the vocalist ends up being sort of percussive where you have a specific note to hit and your choice is when to hit it. And how often to hit it, how quickly, how, you know, how much space is between your notes. Um, so that would lead the guitars to be the only melodic instruments left in the band. And they are mostly used rhythmically as well. Rhythmically and to create dissonance. So a lot of what I gauge to be music I enjoy. I almost said good music. No, what I, music that I tend to enjoy the aspects I look for, none of them are present here. This is just so outside of my comfort zone as far as music goes. But you guys know I'm going to come at this as unbiased as I can and try to look for some interesting things about it. And... There's two things that I think I really want to talk about positively about the band. And the first is the use of time and kind of a sort of free time. A lot of the song seems to be in 4-4. Four, four. However, not much of the song feels like 4-4. Four, four, unless you're really, really honing in on the drums. And even then, some sections still you got to be paying attention for long bits of time because what you're typically looking for, which is going to be that snare hit in this song specifically, sometimes it's withheld for bars. We're talking about eight beats between snare hits sometimes. Um, so it's going to be your compass, your marker to let you know where the beat is, where the downbeat is, and kind of be the thing that shows you where you are in the song. But it's also withheld. The information is withheld occasionally. 
So it's not an always it's not always a reliable marker to let you know what's going on in the song. Um, there were a couple sections where I'm just like, okay, but where's the beats? Where's the bar start? Uh, what time signature are we in? Because I'm not feeling any time. There's a lot of sections that feel like free time, which uh, I guess that's, I mean, there's definitely props to be given there. The song, I am very certain, is in 4-4. But they've created the illusion of free time in a couple of these sections with the sparser playing in them, sparser drum parts, definitely, that have the illusion of free time. So I I, I got to give them props for that. All right. It is not easy to turn 4-4 four, four disjointed to begin with, but free is another thing. Um, so, yeah, that's just... Kind of crazy right there. Got to give him props for that. Uh, the other thing I really want to look at is dissonance. They use dissonance like almost anybody else in the world uses harmony. <laughs> they they put a little bit of rhythm in there, which is where you get your low guitar tones that are you know rhythmic da 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 da, and then where somebody else would put in a nice you know finger tapped run. Or, uh, you know, an arpeggiation or something. These guys just throw the most chaotic, dissonant note relationships rapid fire. <laughs> and we've heard this in a couple of bands. This is not, like I said, not entirely unique to uh, Tony Danza, Tap Dance Extravaganza. But they just use it with such frequency. It pops up all the time that I almost want to say, except for the breakdown, which was heavily rhythmic and focused on the lower end notes, I almost want to say that those dissonant sections outweighed the rhythmic ones. So I guess my main praise for this is that the dissonance occurred so often and I was not completely turned away. There was no point where I was like, I need to turn this off. I'm not enjoying this on some level. So uh, props for that. <laughs> you made dissonance uh, listenable somehow. And I don't know what the formula for that is. I don't know how you can decide to create chaos, little pockets of chaos so frequently and toss them at the listener so often and not come across as nails on a chalkboard. Which the first couple of times I'm like, okay, I've heard this before. Uh, you know, we, we put these, these weird note relationships together uh, in, in hardcore, post-hardcore does it sometimes. Um, my Boy's Periphery, one of my favorite bands. They do it occasionally in, you know, a handful of songs during some of the breakdowns. They'll go for that. There's definitely times when this can be employed. It's not something that immediately turns me off. But after like the third time, I was like, oh, geez, you know, this. we've only been listening for 10 seconds. <laughs> Why are you keep doing this? But, you know, a minute in and it kind of fades into the background. It becomes a noise and it becomes a part of the song, but it's not so... Uh, apparent there's not so much spotlight shown on it after you've heard it so many times and it could just be something to do with frequency uh eventually you just kind of tune it out i don't know uh but i'm i'm surprised <laughs> that uh it, it didn't begin to grade on me after the first minute of doing that forever and you know of course there needs to be a little bit of criticism not criticism well We'll call it praise. I was going to say positive criticism. We're going to go with praise here. Uh, the song is just brutal. Start to finish, it's real heavy. It's gut punch. It's aggressive. Uh, there's aggressive guitar work, aggressive drum work, aggressive vocal work. Uh, start to finish, there's no clean vocals to break this up. There's no harmonic areas. There's no uh, beautiful lead lines. There's no, uh, like the bridge doesn't cut back for a little bit uh, to rein it in. It's just an exhaustive four minute aggressive gut punch and there's something about that i don't personally enjoy it <laughs> but there's definitely something to be said 
for holding my attention for three and a half minutes with music I don't enjoy, but I didn't want to turn off. I, I wanted to see how this ended. So, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess there's something there for that. That was the Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Why did you name yourselves that? I don't know. I guess it's just kind of a hardcore thing to do, right? Just something wild and off the wall. It's hyper memorable. I will never forget. When I see that name, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's those hardcore kids that write the aggressive music. And I say kids, these probably like 30 year olds. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I gave you my thoughts. This is where you hit me up. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this track, what you thought maybe of my analysis, if you thought maybe I was a little too harsh on them, even though I mostly went with the praise. I didn't want to put too much criticism because, like I said, I'm not a fan of the song. I could go on for a while about what I don't like about it, but I think it's more informative to really talk about some of the positive aspects of it. So, yeah, I will, I will probably never listen to this song again. I might check them out again just to see if there's another side to the band. But if this is what they do right now, November 2020, Brian is not too interested in this. Now things change, musical tastes change, who knows what happens in the year 2076. I may fully embrace whatever futuristic prog tech death metal hardcore combination stuff we end up with. I may like the most brutal stuff out there, but right now, this just isn't up my alley. But if it is yours, that's excellent. And if there is another side to these guys and you are aware of it, please let me know. Uh, I don't necessarily, like I said, I don't dislike the brutality. I just need a little bit of counter to it. I don't know if these guys do that, but if they do, I would love to hear that. All right. So I will be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual, with the next video. In the random rumble. Who knows what it's going to be? I don't know. Well, I do know. I have to know. <laughs> Maybe I could just randomly pick from the poll. The poll couldn't even matter. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, already, it's pre picked. I, sh I should not lead with this stuff. <laughs> the songs are ready to go. Uh, I've already picked them. The top two won. Uh, there, this one was number one. We're going to look at the number two poll, the number two in the votes tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we have the random high, random low. And then Friday, we're going to look at the personal pick, the one that I thought was most interesting based on name because I have no idea what any of this stuff is. Um, so, yes, everything's pre picked. I do know what's coming up. <laughs> it's not random in that sense, not anymore. Everything's predetermined now. Um, but they were randomly selected for the polls. So, it's still random rumble, right? <laughs> I'm rambling too much, Ram rambling about the randomness. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode of Critical Reactions. You stay safe out there. Have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.